In this video, we're going to look at taking a fairly generic sounding vocal like this. I'm finding a way, I can never do well, but I want you by my side on my all day. And turn it into this. using Beat Scholar as a MIDI effects plugin in Logic Pro. I'm going to start by taking this audio region and dragging it to the track header and creating an optimized quick sampler instrument. And I'll just mute this original vocal track now. Now I'm going to set the snap mode to transient and note. And I'm going to set the gate mode on here so that when we trigger longer slices, they're not going to play through in a one-shot style, but they'll play through based on how long the note is held or programmed for and the release envelope over here, which I'll shorten a little bit. Now I'm going to adjust the sensitivity slider. I only need a dozen or so slices to work with and something like that should be fine. Now I can start moving these around and they'll snap to transients and I can experiment with what are going to be sort of meaningful parts of the notes to trigger. And I can audition them from my keyboard. There's an example of the release envelope allowing for shorter notes, but I don't like that on transient. I'm going to move that one. That's good. All right, so I think I have some pretty good slices here, and I'm just going to set up a little bit of reverb on this so that we get reverb on the slices that are going to be triggered by Beat Scholar. Great. So I'm going to close this up for now. And in the track inspector here, I'm going to go under the MIDI effects plugin section under audio units and modalics, Beat Scholar MIDI effects. And this is a fully resizable interface. And we can start by just reducing some of the rows. I want to just work with one to begin with. And that's fine. Now I'm going to have to map all of these to correspond to the note slices in Quick Sampler. So I'm going to switch to mapping. Now I'm going to mouse drag each of these starting at C1 and going up chromatically. Now the good news is once I've got all of these set one time, I can save it as a preset for easy recall in the future. I'm going to click the floppy disk icon and it'll open to the right directory and all I need to do is name it and hit save. And now it's available as a preset here. So with this done, I'm going to switch to the randomizer tool and I can switch this back here and I'm going to select which of these slices I want included. And I'll just choose some random ones. I can use all of them, but I'll just start with those. And let's start by setting this for the slicing to two and four. This is based on quarter notes and we can change that over here, but quarter notes are the default for each of these beat pizzas. And I'm going to divide them into either two or four slices, not eight. And I'm going to lower the trigger chance for the probability of the slices getting filled. And I'm going to leave the spacing neutral in terms of when there is something triggered, how likely it'll be for something to be triggered right next to it. And I'll set a fairly wide velocity range. And let's click here and see what that gives us. That's great. Now I like that, but I want to try some other variations. So I'm going to switch to this one called fill and I've got two rows here. And let's just try randomizing this with the same settings. And let's hear what we have. That's pretty cool. Now I have the two rows I can treat separately, but I think I'm going to leave that one. Now I want to create some variations on these, but I don't want to lose these. So I can duplicate them and create a library of patterns to use. I'm going to start by renaming this by right clicking. And then I'll click here to create a duplicate. And now rename this one. And I can extend it and randomize a longer version. That's really cool. Now I'm going to go back to the first one and I'm going to duplicate that one as well over here. And I'll right click and rename it. And I can click the plus button to lengthen it for a longer pattern and maybe change some of this. I'll lower the probability and increase the spacing a bit so that there's less chance of them being close together. And I'll leave the same beat slicing variations, but let's add additional slices in to the pool of what's going to be selected. And let's randomize that. Great. I think I'm going to just 
click here to add something there. Great, so we can continue adding and creating a library of patterns. Let's go to here and create one more. And again, I'll lengthen this one. And let's see what we get. So that's very cool. Now, another thing I can do to interact with Beat Scholar is go back to Quick Sampler and you'll see as I play it, it's triggering these slices. But I can change some of these trigger points and have them trigger different slices. Change that one. So that's one way of getting in and customizing what's generated. Now, you could easily choose any of these patterns and just use it as a kind of hook or phrase, or we can shift click and drag to export these directly to Logic's track. Now, when we do this, we can then turn off Beat Scholar because we're basically using it as an idea generator and then go into Logic's piano roll where we can edit any of the note on positions or lengths of the slices or even which slice is triggered. So those are some ideas on how you can get started using Beat Scholar as a MIDI effects plugin in Logic Pro. Yeah.